Hey guys, this is Colin from Blackjack Apprenticeship and I want to spend some time talking about some of the most common mistakes that I find new card counters making. So I've been training people for quite a while now at card counting and these are some of the most common things that either I've tried to do or, or had to learn from or a lot of the things that I find when I'm training people or even reading YouTube comments or whatever. And the first one is people choosing too complex of a card counting system. So there are a lot of counts out there and you can think, hey, if I choose the most complicated count like high op two with an ace side count, then I'm really gonna make the money. But my advice for you is learn high low and don't just take my word for it. You could ask, Richard Munchkin, who's a brilliant advantage player. You can ask pretty much any pro and they're gonna say, just use high-low. It's what all the major teams, the MIT team, the Highlanders, the teams that I've run, the church team, it's what we've all used. We've been very successful at it. And I think just sticking with high-low and mastering it, getting fast at it, getting efficient at it, that's gonna be much better than spending an extra one or 200 hours learning a more complicated count. While you spent that extra one or 200 hours learning high up two with an ace side count, I maybe just went out and generated $50,000 of EV with high low because I was able to master it so much faster and even play more rounds per hour doing it. So a second common mistake that I find with new card counters is using too much cover. So here's what happens. Someone takes the time to learn and master card counting and they think, I don't wanna just get kicked out of every casino using this. And so there's this thought of, well, if I use some cover, some betting cover, some cover plays, then I won't get found out as a card counter. But here's the problem. We're playing with about a 1% edge and those playing mistakes add up. We're playing with too small of an edge to worry about using incorrect strategies. And here's what I'd really challenge you with as a card counter or an advantage player is don't care more about heat than you care about EV. If you're spending your time worrying about not getting kicked out, there's a good chance that you're actually not gonna be making any money. If your goal is to spend lots of hours in a casino, fine, go for it. If your goal is to make money, you gotta care more about generating EV than worrying about heat. I'll just put it this way. The most profitable card counters I know all use little to no camouflage. That means no playing camo and little to no betting camouflage. And these are people betting up to thousands of dollars a hand. So if you wanna imitate them, do yourself a favor and don't worry about using all this playing camouflage. The third common mistake I find with new card counters is overestimating or overbetting their advantage. So yes, we make real money by putting bets out there in positive true counts, but if you're overbetting, you are going to lose your bankroll. And another way people overestimate their advantage is at a true one. So we start to get the edge at a true one or around there depending on the casino's rules, but it's a small edge right there at a true one. And you don't want to just start firing large bets at a true one. That is the sure, surest way to lose a large portion of your bankroll. Another way people overestimate their edge is by not really understanding where their advantage comes from. So some people think if I use a really complicated count with a whole bunch of deviations, I'm going to make tons of money. And feel free to use a complicated count and there's nothing wrong with learning extra deviations, but the real edge comes from a perfect count that you implement perfectly with a well-managed bankroll and bet spread and getting those hours in. If you don't manage your bankroll properly, if you don't have perfect skills, you will lose money no matter what extra things you try to add to your game like complicated deviations and you know complicated cover. What you really need to focus on as an early card counter, perfect play, perfect bankroll management and getting in those hours. Another common mistake I find with new card counters is playing through negative counts. And I guarantee some of you watching this are cringing when I say this because you don't want to hear it. But I say this all the time at our boot camps and, and at Blackjack Apprenticeship, we're not there to play blackjack. We're not at the casinos to play lots of rounds of blackjack. We're there to play positive rounds of blackjack. And when you sit there playing through those negative shoes, you're doing two things you're skyrocketing your risk and you are just giving away valuable EV. So just like our advantage goes up as the true count goes higher and higher, the casino's advantage goes up as the true count goes more and more negative. So you've got to do yourself a huge favor and not play those negative true counts. It's the quickest way to save bankroll, lower risk, increase EV. So if the count's going negative, just find an excuse to leave the table. Go get a drink, go to the bathroom, just say, I'm gonna sit out, wait for the shuffle, whatever it is. I use all those excuses all the time. It doesn't look odd, or even if it does look odd, get over it. You're a card counter, not a gambler. But 
Also, another thing to be aware of as a new card counter is if you drop the running count, you gotta wong out. If you say, uh, it was seven and I have no idea what it is right now, don't just guess. Don't just play through the shoe, playing basic strategy. You're just wasting money if you do that. If you don't know the running count, step away from the table or sit out or say you gotta check your messages on your phone or whatever. Just don't sit at the table continuing to play when you don't know the running count. Another common mistake I see with new card counters is letting the game control them rather than them controlling the game. So you know that feeling, you sit down at a table and you know your, your heart rate is pounding and the cards are flying out and you've got a playing decision to make and everyone's looking at you and the dealer's like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And you just make a decision. You cannot do that. You can't just put a bet out there because it's your turn to place a bet and you don't know what your true count is. You've gotta to learn to control the game. And there are a few things that can really help you with this. One is to keep training at home. Keep getting faster and faster at basic strategy, counting, true count conversion, and deviations. The faster you get, the easier it's gonna be in the casino to make those decisions quickly. But it takes more than just getting fast at it. It takes being in control. It takes being okay, being uncomfortable. It takes not caring if the other players are giving you a hard time or the dealer's saying, hurry up and make a decision. You've got to learn to control the game. With the church team, sometimes we made our players pause the table for a minute. So this was during a test out. This is when we were saying, prove to us that you can, you can do what you're gonna to need to do for us to hand you $100,000 and play for our team. And we'd say, pause the table for a minute. And they'd sit there and you know, a couple seconds go by and the dealer was like, what are you gonna do? And they would have to continue to just sit there for a full minute, which felt horribly painful. It feels awful sitting there doing nothing for a minute. But when you do that, you realize you're in control. The dealer can't deal until you make a hand signal. The other players at the table don't matter. They're there to gamble, you're there to make money. So do yourself a favor and learn how to be in control while you're playing at the tables. If you don't, you're not gonna make it as a card counter. So these are just a handful of common mistakes that I see. I know there are some more. Feel free to leave a comment below with some other mistakes either you've experienced or you've heard or seen other card counters use. Put in the time, keep training, and also check out our video, How to Keep the Count with All the Distractions in the Casino. If you're new to playing in the casino, this video gives you some tips to help you control the game in the casino so you have the best chance of taking the casino's money.